Oh, hey, what do you guys think? My hit lights. How old is that guy? He's as old as Jesus, dude. He's as old as God. He must be programmed forever to be that good. I think he graduated high school in 1992, which would make him 38. 941. Isn't that amazing? What, uh, you guys have any thoughts or comments? What stands out to you? He's worked on a lot of projects? Yeah. What was that part? A lot of creativity and down the hoe. I didn't hear all that. What did you say? Oh, you don't know what you said after that? Yeah, a lot of creativity. Bro, oh, show. What else? What else stands out to you from that? Some people are just really smarter than others. I mean, it's a guy like that. I mean, it's he can actually put like a, a thought or an echo or, or uh, you know something and actually do it. You know, and it's crazy how smart somebody can be. I would say that potential resides within you all. Yeah, but you gotta be realistic. You know, I mean, I say that potential yeah, resides within you all. I hear, you're trying, I, hear you're short. Hmm? I hear what you're trying to say. It's just Don't cut yourself short. I kid you not, dude. Uh, if you are passionate and you go for programming, if you say, hey, that's my thing, and you do it six hours a day for 10 years, you'll be 20 whatever, or 32 whatever, and you'll be just as good, if not better. So time is a tricky thing. Because when you're young, it seems like four years to get through college, at least that's how it was for me. Shoot, that's forever. Gosh, how does anybody get good at anything? You know, it seems like it just takes forever. Like when I was a kid, and it was like, you know, like those last like 12 days till Christmas, and you made that little thing in elementary school where you pull a little chain link off of paper each time. Oh my God, it's forever. It's an eternity until Christmas gets here. And there's like three left. I can't wait. Right? And now I'm like, wow. Yeah, I could do 10 years, no problem. Put me, put me in solitary confinement. Let me write. Give me some books. I could do 10 years. I mean grad school, not prison. <laughs> yeah, either one. Right? Like six years. Yeah, no problem. Devote myself to something for six years, no problem. Uh, so it shifted for me somehow along the line. And yeah. So you could do, you could be that good. I guarantee it. So I got into a car accident last Tuesday. You got in a car accident and I'm last Tuesday. Sure he was texting and driving, and that's because I know he should have been in this class with me. Because yeah. that joke, he continued. I got hit three times. So he hit me from the back. He, I'm pretty sure he was still going 40 miles an hour at this point. I was at zero. So I'm pretty sure he was still pushing me to the car in front of me. Oh, shoot. His car did not stop, and he hit me again. I'm like, how are you going to hit me twice? Well, he had to finish his text message, obviously. Right, he's like, like, hold on. Bam. Hold on. Bam. <laughs> that was my motto. I thought that I was just like, okay, well, that was kind of ridiculous. Did you, did you say, were you texting and driving? I didn't ask him. But he no, didn't want to wait for the cops to show up. He gave me straight up false information. He gave falsified information. Mm -hmm. And then he don't want to for the cops when he did. The girl stayed when he hit in the front. She stayed with the guy did. The guy gave falsified information and left? And before the cops showed up. And I'm like, well, is really nothing to call the cops now? Uh, so like, always take pictures. Did you have your cell phone with you? Mm -hmm. You should have been, hey, what's up? <laughs> hey, what? <laughs> <laughs> Just want to make sure, you know, getting photos of the accident. Here's the dude that hit me. I'm going to put it on Facebook. Oh, you hit me. Give me a high five. Got your picture. <laughs> Couldn't she have a, like took a picture of the license plate and then called the cops there? No, you shouldn't take pictures of everything and call the police. Try to remember the license plate. Take pictures of the people, take pictures of the license plate, take pictures of the car. I hold you. I'm sorry to hear that. I'm glad you're okay. <laughs> Only material stuff, vehicles. That all passes. Uh, so what else stood out to you from the video? This is what stood out to me. 
Like, uh, I really like this entire thing of data representation. Like, how when we saw this with Gapminder, how do we take data and visually present it in a way that's really amazing? Data representation. And so, you know, the access to data, and Google, you know, is really based upon accessing data. Like, let's search all of the web and bring you the results that you're looking for. But gapminder.org, right, took social data, health and wealth, and really created a really cool interface that allowed us to kind of put our heads around, look at the last 200 years of history, by country, by continent, you know, how life expectancy has changed and how wealth has changed over 200 years, and to see that. He took all the flight data. Well, if you saw that data originally, it'd just be a bunch of numbers on, on a spreadsheet, a bunch of numbers on a spreadsheet. And he took all that and really kind of created this beautiful de de depiction, depiction, depiction of uh, look at look at the flight traffic pattern around America. Like, wow, that's really cool. And I knew there were so many planes in there. Um, or or being able to do this massive online collaboration, crowdsourcing, right? So doing the crowdsourcing with with uh, the Sheep Project, Daisy, that song. I don't know if you guys remember that when we were doing the, the very first week, right, 2001, when Hal was dying, we were singing that song. But uh, doing that, or doing that dollar bill deal, or doing the one with the Johnny Cash project, you know, where, wow, all these people come together and are able to collaborate online and create something amazing. So I think that's also really another big piece of, of what he's sharing. Amazon Turk, how many people have heard of Amazon Turk before? Yeah, so that might be something you make in your notes. If you're taking notes, Amazon Turk. That'd be really cool to check out. So Amazon Turk is like where you could sign up on Amazon and you could contribute to projects. Oh, yeah. And people will pay you a little bit of money to do things, right? So he was paying two cents to draw a sheet. So really you're not gonna make a ton of money you know, because you're competing with people in areas of the world who can do that where two cents is, is more significant to them, you know, like some people make two dollars a day, and so making two cents to draw a sheep, that's great. Um, but Amazon Turk allows you to crowdsource activities to people if, if it can be done in a digital way. So like, will it eventually build up, or like, how does that work? The, the amount that they pay? Yeah, yeah, like... He was offering two like, he was offering two cents. He was. So he would pay that. Yeah. Amazon is the broker. Oh, okay. right. So he says, here's my project, I'll pay two cents. And then Amazon puts that out there at their Amazon Turk page. And uh, other people come and do it. And then Amazon collects the money from him and pays it to the people who did it, and Amazon takes the cut. Oh, okay. And so uh, yeah. it's just for anything that people want to put up there. So mm -hmm. Yeah, you can search through it. And uh, see what kind of projects are up there. And you have to like compete with someone, or do you, or do you just draw and submit it and pays you two cents? Yeah, that's, that's it. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, or you know, but there's all kinds of projects. I haven't looked yeah. at it in a long time. But when we get to our open lab part, that might be something interesting to look at. See what's out there. So uh, the Amazon Turk thing was was pretty pretty interesting. I also found it really interesting that entire blend of technology and humanity. He kept coming back to humanity, like talking about humanity, and just how he kind of uh, brings those two pieces together. You know, thinking not only about the technology, but also about the humanity, the combination of the two. So I think it's pretty neat video. Have you guys seen the John and Cash Project? You want to hit the front lights? Has anybody ever heard that bit rock, that music video? Ain't No Grave? Nobody's ever heard it? Let's go look at the Johnny Cash Project. So here's the Johnny Cash Project. And uh, highest rated frames, director curated, random pointillism. So here are all the different ones. Watch the video, right? Contribute about credits. So I wonder, wonder where that watch the video. Where is that thing? Choose a frame. 
Uh, so we could draw one of those frames if we wanted. Uh, that's contribute. Watch the video. I don't want to have sound just yet. But if we play it, oh, can we go over the frames down here? Let's pause the video for a second. Can we go over the frames? Yeah, if we go over the frames, we can see who drew it. And then we can see, uh, you know, 24 minutes. In Canada, MJ Hippie is the artist. You know, here's another one. Uh, six minutes, 25 strokes. It's in the Ukraine, right? Draw this frame, share, play drawing session. Play drawing session. So we can see the person actually draw it. That's kind of cool, huh? Anybody interested in hearing that video and seeing the whole video? I kind of like the highest rated one. Well, uh, my favorite one is actually on YouTube. So yeah, you could come in here and say, hey, I want to see the highest rated one. But my favorite one is uh, on YouTube. These are just different people that log in and create it or what? Yeah. So it's different people who've logged in and you know thousands of people have drawn a single frame. And, um, wow, okay, which one was my favorite? 547, I think that's the one where they're talking about it. It's not the one I want to see. I'll find it for you at the end of class, and we'll watch it. We'll take a look at the end of class. All right, so does anybody have any uh, questions, comments, or thoughts? No? Very good. So uh, I will go through chapter 10 with you, uh, that little handout. But before we do that, we'll do a reading of the cards. A reading of the cards from, what, Monday. Thanks for the Google pen. It's too bad that I didn't get to go uh, to the tour, but if there is another chance, yeah, sure. Hearing about the, thi about the things and technology now, I can't imagine what they'll be able to invent in 10 to 15 years from now by Google. Exciting and creepy. Today I learned that Google is a really cool place to work at. I like the Prague video about the 600th year old building. I thought it was very creative. Now they present it because the audience didn't seem, and how they present it because the audience didn't seem bored. The evolution of delivering information has come such a long way from verbal to zeros and ones. Having great content may be fun in the media but when the form is firm and awesome, then that is when you can really interact with the media, almost as if it is real life. So we were talking about content and form a lot on Monday, and multimedia. I learned the impact that Google is having on the world. The idea that it's totally in the plans that many vehicles will be unmanned is awesome. I'm eager to see how it proceeds and develops. Yeah, thank goodness uh, they'll have those when I become an old guy, because I already find it hard enough to see at night. <laughs> When I was young, I didn't have that problem. How many of you have a problem seeing at night? How many of you driving at night is no problem? No problem driving at night. You can see just great. Yeah, I used to be like that too, and I'd hear adults say, don't drive at night. What the hell are you talking about? No, I know. After today, hearing about the Google trip, I wish I would have gone. I hope uh, the opportunity can come up again soon. Next semester, man. We'll see if we can make it happen again. I thought it was really cool how Google is making glasses that record what you look at. It was cool to see everything that Google has to offer to us and to the world. Pretty soon, the Google car will be for everyone, and it can drive itself. I'm really glad you guys had a great time at Google. Thanks for telling us about your experience. Yay for reminiscing about DevFest West. Google is so freaking awesome. I guess multimedia is too. Like that Prague video, that was so impressive. It's fascinating how much different, how many different forms content can take these days as compared to the past. Just mind blowing. That's awesome. So I think you guys really kind of got a grasp on that entire content and form thing. You know, not only what you say, but also how you say it. And that's a that's a great great thing to learn. And uh, not only what you say, also how to say it, how you say it. So uh, today we'll look a little bit more closely at. Multimedia. 
I've been hard on myself my whole life. <laughs> you know, you're saying 41's not that old? No, it's not. Yeah. I mean, it's all relative, I guess. Um, yeah, I'm, no, really young. I'm I don't think I'm going to be playing in the NBA or the Major you League Baseball. Do as long as That's you right. Just a couple hours a day, you take me out. Yeah, there you go. Just practice. Yeah. Uh, thanks, man. Um, all right, so, you know, uh, picture coding schemes. Let's do that. And if you have your, who doesn't have a Chapter 10 handout? Chapter 10, Chapter 10. There we go. One or two? One. I love it. A couple that shares their notes together will be happy. Two? Three. Two. You got one? There you go, my friend. There you go. You need one? You guys need that one? Very good. All right. All right, so when we deal with the images, there's two main, two main images, two, way, two main images. So we are looking at uh, the two main images. Make a note of this. I should, I should add this to my notes, actually. I'll make a note of it, too. There's bitmap and there's vector. Bitmap and vector images. Bitmap and vector, B-E-C-T-O-R. Bitmap, B-I-T-M-A-P, all right? So here's bitmap, right there, bitmap. So it's two, two main ways, like how do we store image content? Two main ways to do that. So bitmap, we're actually mapping the bits. We're mapping the bits, that's where that comes from, bitmap, mapping the bits. So we came up when we looked at the individual squares on the screen, those are each called pixels. And pixels is a combination of picture element, P-I-X-E-L, pixel. So every screen is made up of pixels. Right? And they're little picture elements. And in each little square, we can make different colors. And, uh, and then we can map all of those bits, right? Oh, they're these colors. And then we could have a bit mapped image. Right? So it really comes down to this pixel is this color. So that's how bit mapped images work. Okay? So let me ask you a question. If I had, if I had a screen resolution, a screen resolution, of 1280 by 768. 1280 by 768. So I have 1,280 pixels going this way. Like You can see the lines on there, little picture elements. And I have 768 going that way. Okay? So I've got 1280, 1280 by 768. So I have a total of 983,040 individual little dots of color or pixels, picture elements, okay? You guys get that? That's how many, that's how many on this screen right now little dots of color there are making up this image that you're looking at. And the, each of those little pixels is, uh, how, how do we store the color for each pixel? We do it with zeros and ones. So if I use one bit, if I use my color depth, here's a key phrase, color depth, Right? So if my color depth is one bit, right, each pixel can be how many different colors? So for if each pixel I'm only storing one bit, a zero or a one, right, then, then uh, how many different colors can each pixel be? Two, right? Because if for each pixel, like if I have a light bulb, it could be, it could be green or it could be black, right? Zero or one. Okay, so if I have a bit depth of one, then I, I, I am storing 983,040 zeros and ones to store the information for this image. Okay, to store the information for that image, I'm storing 983,040 bits, binary digits. How many people are completely like I'm talking Greek? Let me see your hands. How many people are, com are completely up to speed with me? You're tracking with me. You're following me. Let me see your hands. Remember, the truth will save you. Put your hands up if you're following me. The truth will save you. Put your hands up. Let me see them. Put your hands up. 
You're following me. Okay, so, okay, all right. We're about 50-50. I think it depends. Dang. Ah! Cool. What's going on? We have picture elements. Pixels are picture elements. And uh, then we have a uh, bit, let me see what I want to do next, picture, picture elements, um, resolution, number of pixels, e.g., for example, uh, 1,280 by 768, okay? So the resolution of my screen could be, I could say my resolution is 1280 by 768. What does that mean? It means that on my screen there's that many, right, if I find the area of that length times width and I find the area, there's 983,040 pixels on my screen. So who wasn't here Monday? Let me see your hand. Okay. Wow, oh, it's kind of cool. Like half the class shows up Monday, half the class shows up Wednesday, and then we've got those 10 in the middle. <laughs> or there's some interesting thing there. So everybody, if you can't come up and saw this yesterday and you feel like you got it, stay down. But if you weren't here Monday, or if you feel like I'm still trying to get my head around this, come on, come on back up. Come on back up. Everybody get up. That's where you get up. Get up, come on up. Get up, come on up. I know it's scary. There's bright light up here. But oh, you want us to look at the little squares around there, right? Right. Yeah. Come on up. Come on up. Just see him again. Come on up. Oh, you feel like you got it. Okay. Yeah. You guys feel like you got it. Look at the little squares. You see them? There's 983,040 of these little squares, right? Yeah, I don't know if this is exactly, because we're going through a projector, so just for an example, say we'll say yes, but I don't know if that's actually the truth. See the little squares? Okay. Once you've seen the little squares, you just know. Come on up. You can't see the squares from way back there. See the little squares? Those are all little pixels. Yeah? And that's just like that on all of your other screens, on your iPhone, on this screen right here. That's how the image is made up. A bunch of little dots of color. Okay? So when we talk about the resolution, we're talking about how many pixels are, are on, on, on the screen you're looking at. And uh, so, and then I could say, okay, well, each pixel, like how am I going to store an image? Like we learned how we store text. We learned about coding schemes. We learned about coding schemes at the beginning of the semester. Okay, so the text coding schemes were what? Zero and one. Yeah, they were all made of zeros and ones. But give me three of the text coding schemes that we learned about. JPEG. Text. That's good. That's, that's image. What's text? And give me your key terms. What, did I, what have I told you about the key terms? How am I not teaching you guys effectively? What do I need to do differently? I know you're getting a lot of good stuff. I see somebody smiling a little bit like maybe they have the answer. I don't know what you're talking about. I mean, I do, but I don't know. How can I teach you guys more effectively? Do you need more discipline? I mean, seriously, for, for, for the benefit of future students, do you guys need more discipline? Do you want to just learn the facts? Do you need me to give you a test every two weeks, give students tests every two weeks? Is that what's important? Because I've given you pieces of paper and I said, these are the key terms from this chapter. So that you are not an idiot in the world. 
for your own benefit, know these things. And I ask you something. There's only like 10 terms, 20 terms each week. And I ask you something, you're like, I have no idea. You got an idea? Yeah, the uh, ASCAH. Uh, yeah. ASC, oh, sorry, ASCII, EBCPIC, the new code. Yeah. Thank you. I'm serious though. You guys let me know because I'm not an expert. How can I help you most effectively? I mean, obviously, I'm teaching you what I think is really important. There's a lot of stuff going on hum humanity, technology, the entire interface, texting and driving. Right, and you get a lot. You're hopefully you're learning a lot of things, which just you're absorbing, which is important. But also to be technically literate, really make sure you guys know these key terms. You hear me say that, and you nod your heads, but then I ask you, and you're like, I don't know. <laughs> no, so, no. So what should we be doing? All these finding the definitions, all that, and be ready to come back so that when you go over them, we know them. Or are you, like, are you wanting to give these this information? We have to jot it down and then. Because you. you haven't gone over this yet. No. All of it. So then, how will we? If I don't go over it, you should know. So okay. yeah, right. and just so that when I'm talking with you or anybody's talking with you, you could say, "Oh, coding schemes. It's all zeros, ones. You know, we. How do we store text in a computer? How do you translate text into zeros and ones? Well, the letter A is represented by zero, one, one, zero. The letter B is zero, one, one, one. Letter C is 0001, right? We create some coding scheme where we say, hey, this combination of zeros and ones represents these letters. And there's three coding schemes that have been created, a lot have been created, but three main ones for text. And now the biggest one, the most commonly used one, is Unicode, right? But ASCII and FC Vic and Unicode are text coding schemes. So that's just a scheme, a schematic, where somebody said this series of zeros and ones represents these letters. So that's how we store letters, because it all comes back to on and off switches. So we're going to look at how do we store text with zeros and ones, or we have already looked at that, right? Because computers run on electricity. Electricity has two states, on and off. And those on and off states can be stored. And originally in first generations, we stored them in vacuum tubes. Second generation computers, we stored them in, in uh, what? Storage file. We went vacuum tubes for first generation computers. Transistors. They went from the big light bulb looking things down to the little black thing I passed around with two wires coming out of it. Transistors, right? Third generation were integrated circuits or chips. Circuits that were built right into silicon wafers. Fourth generation were CPUs. Yeah. And uh, so we, we have zeros and ones, we gotta store text. So we say, hey, the letter A is equal to this. The letter B is equal to that. And we just create all kinds of coding schemes for text. Well, how do we do that now with images? How do we do that now with images? We might hit the front lights, just the front. Or, yeah, they're all on, that's great, turn them all on. How do we do that with uh, with images? So that's how we did it with text. How do we do it with images? So if we look at our resolution on our screen, it's just a bunch of dots. That's all that's on our screen, right? A bunch of pixel elements. Okay, all these dots. You guys came up and you saw the dots on the screen, those pixels, picture elements. Okay, so now help me. Right now, all my dots are just blue, unless I tell them to be something else. So for each dot, I have to store data about what color that dot should be, what color that pixel, that picture element should be. For each one, for each pix pixel, I have to store data. What color do I want that pixel to be? I need to store zeros and ones for what color I want each pix picture element to be. What are these picture elements? What color are these right here? Zeros and ones. Yeah, but what color is this? Blue. Blue. What color is this? A lighter shade blue. Yeah, what color is this? White. Yeah, what color is that? Orange. Yeah, yellow, orange, red. So for all of the, each little dot, each little pixel, 
all, out of all my pixels, each one has to have its own unique special color to make the image. So how, how, how do I, you know, so for each pixel element, I'm storing zeros and ones. So, you know, this one right here, you know, is going to be some zeros or ones, right? This one right here is going to be some zeros and ones. You know, all of them are going to, behind them, there's going to be zeros and ones. And then I can say, hey, those zeros and ones, this, this is, you know, that combination of zeros and ones, that's fuchsia. This combination is blue. This combination is light blue. Okay? But that's like if I'm using a ton of zeros and ones. I am only able to store, this is called the bit depth, by the way. Right here, how many zeros and ones? How many zeros and ones are used to store the color information? Is the bit depth. So if I have a bit depth equal to one, I am only able to store. I have a bit depth equal to one. I am only able to store. A single bit. It can be zero or it can be one. I can only store one binary digit for each pixel. All right. In which case, this would be maybe green, and this would be maybe black and black. And that is, in fact, the kind of monitor my friend Rob Gamble had when I was in junior high and early high school. I think this is the first time maybe I've ever mentioned Rob Gamble in my lectures. I should show you a picture of Rob. You'd be like, ah, oh, trip out. <laughs> He's like this hardcore punk rocker friend I had. He's a funny guy. So this would be called a monochromatic. Monochromatic. This is monochromatic. One color, mono. Monochromatic. Even had a bit depth of one. How many people are tracking me now? Let me see your hands. You're getting it. Okay, cool. All right. And now, if I had a bit depth of two, that means that I could have things like this. All right. A bit depth of two means that I could have, if I'm storing two zeros and ones, you know, like uh, two bits for each pixel, I could have that each pixel could be one of four possible colors. Because I, I, could, I, could have, I could have zero, zero, I could have zero, one, I could have one, zero, and I could have one, one. And I could say, hey, that is equal to white, that is equal to black, black, that's equal to red, and that's equal to blue. So over here, zero, one, oh, that's black. And then one, one, oh, that's blue. And then one zero, oh, that's red. Right? So if I have a bit depth of two, I now have a screen that can show four different colors for each pixel. So I can start to create a little more. If I have a bit depth of three, I can store eight you know, different colors. Four, I can store 16. 32, 64, 128, 256, 512, 1024. Right? So when I get up to like a bit depth of 16 or 24, like one of them, I forget what, is, is considered real color, true color. Let's take a look at that. True color, the use of 24-bit color depth to display an RGB image, red, green, black image. All right? So 
So here's true color, 24 bits. So each pixel, each pixel has 24 zeros and ones. And with 24 zeros and ones, there are 16,800,000 colors that each pixel can be. So a lot of precision. So when you take a photograph in true color, well, that's not very big, right? But look at all the different color possibilities in there, you know? Which is a bigger image. Versus, like, here's, here's, here, oh, this is an awesome page. I'm really glad we came here. Here's a bit depth of one, right? Black or white, okay? Bit depth of one. Here's the bit depth of two. So now we got four colors. Here's the bit depth of uh, four bits. So we've got 16 colors. So that's starting to look better. Uh, eight bits. So we have 256 colors. That's pretty good. Right? And then 24 bits. Wow, that's great. So do you, you get, are you getting it? And that's mapping bits. That is mapping bits. So that's why we call it bit map. So every, uh, every little square can only have four, uh, four Each pixel? Yeah. Only four, right? Only four colors? No, no, no. Uh, four different, whatever, I don't know. Each pixel can only have... Like the one, two, three that you were talking about. Okay, each pixel uh -huh. uh, can display an infinite number of colors. But we got to store what color is going to be displayed. So if we just say, hey, we only have so much memory in our computer, we're only going to store one binary digit, either 0 or 1, right, to represent the color of each pixel, <clears throat> then our, our pixel can only be either 0 or 1. And when we say, hey, 0 is black and 1 is green, then it's only going to be black or green. But if we say, no, we got a ton of storage space on our computer. We could use 24 binary digits. Because with one, when we did text coding schemes, right, one binary digit, we could store two messages. Two binary digits, four. Likewise with colors. Like if we had two binary digits for st storing color information, we could store four colors. So if we had a ton of storage space, we could say, hey, we're going to use 24 zeros and ones to store the color of each pixel. So for each little pixel, there's 24 zeros and ones you know, saying it's this exact color. And when we have 24 zeros and ones, right, there's 17 million, 17 million, 800,000 uh, possible c color colors it could be. If it's only two binary digits, then there's only four colors it could be, right? It could be 0011, 1001. Does that help? Good question, dude. Always ask questions. When I was in grad school, I was like, I still don't get it. I still don't get it. I didn't care. You know, just keep asking until you do get it. Because it's all about coding schemes, right? It's all about coding schemes. How do we store the zeros and ones? So those are, those are mapping bits, a bitmap image. Mapping bits. And some of the bitmap images that are out there, JPEG, GIF, PNG, there's actually a bitmap image. Those are file formats, raw, TIFF. Those are all bitmap images. Escape, control Z, control Z. Ah, oh, there we go. I don't know why that's funny like that. There we go, now it went away. So those are file formats. And then we could adjust the resolution of our file formats. Right, so with bitmaps, when you zoom in on a bitmap image, so let me find one and see if we can do that. So I'm going to download, download this image right here. Save image as. And I'm going to put it on my desktop. And it's called True Color. I'm going to go to my desktop, and if I look, there's the image True Color. And I'm going to right click and see what can I open this with. And I can use Paint, Browser, Photo Viewer. Let's see if I can zoom in on Paint. So I'm opening it in Paint. And now I'm looking for some kind of a zoom. So I got a little zoom right there. Zoom in. 
And so I'm just going to zoom in on this. And as I zoom in, you see the picture elements now, right? You can actually see the pixels. You see them? All the different little pixels, different colors. So for each of these, we're storing that color information, and we're using 24 zeros and ones for each of those. 24 zeros and ones to store the information for each of those. And, and that's, that's where we've mapped each of the bits. So that's a bitmap image. And as you pull back, the resolution looks fine, so you just see it. But if you zoom really in, far in, you see the pixels. That's called pixelization. Maybe you've heard that pixelated. All the picture's all pixelated. You zoomed in too far on it to blow it up. Can you, can you make up your own numbers for each <coughs> color, or is there a set number for each color? Generally, it's just set. Oh. And as technology progresses, we've been able to have store more zeros and ones for each pixel. So originally, we could only store you know, the bit depth of one, and that was a monochromatic monitor back in the 80s. Uh, but you can also, you can also, when you're shooting your camera, you can choose settings. And uh, if you choose like higher resolution, you're going to be saving more data, right? And then that just what you're doing is you're saving more zeros and ones. But usually it doesn't say what is, what do you want your bit depth to be. It says do you want it to save a super fine resolution or medium resolution or low resolution or low quality. And then when I save this image, so if I go to File, Save As, right, I'm going to recreate it. It'll ask me, right here it asks me, do I want to save as 32, 24, 8 bit? And notice how when I change these up here, you guys see that up there? Right, as I change these, my uh, file size is 192 kilobits, 169 kilobits, 40 kilobits. Kilobyte, sorry. All right? Because uh, I'm storing less information at 8 bit. Storing, you know, one third the information at 8 bit. That makes sense? And then I can also, I can also, when I save it, I'm going to go back to auto detect. When I save it, it didn't ask me actually. File save as and strike in. I'm going to save it as a JPEG this time. So you can see these file formats here, PNG, JPEG, GIF, BMP. <coughs> when I save it as a JPEG, it asks me for a quality setting. So here in JPEG, it's a different file format. I can adjust the quality setting, and it figures out all that other stuff on its own. So what's the difference between, right, when I go to File, Save As, what's the difference between JPEG, PNG, GIF, BMP, Right? What, what, what's the difference? And what, what those are is their coding, coding, coding schemes, basically. It's kind of like ASCII, EBCDIC, DIC, Unicode. Right? There's different ways to store the zeros and ones for the colors. And, uh, and it's, it could also be thought of as a compression, decompression algorithm or a codec. Right? So you see CO, CO. DEC, All right, so sometimes you'll hear, oh, that's this codec. And what that stands for is a compression-decompression algorithm. Compression-decompression algorithm. A codec, that's what a codec is. So what does that mean? So let's say, on this picture, right, we're using a bit depth of one to store this image resolution right here, or to store this image. What if we're using true color of 24 bits? Right? Well, now we're storing 23,592,960 uh, binary digits to store an image with a resolution of 1,280 by 768 and a bit depth of 24. We're storing 23.5 million, zero, 23 million zeros and ones. Oh my God, for one picture. Oh my God, that's a lot. But if, if we say, well, how many, you know, that's, that's the actual binary digits. Let's put it into terms we actually think about, right? So binary digits, and then what's, there's bits, and then there's bytes, and a byte is eight binary digits. So that's, uh, that's only 
2.9 million bytes, but if we uh, do it by a thousand, all right, then that becomes kilobytes. So that's only 2,949 kilobytes, right? And if we do it one more time, right, then it becomes megabytes. That's 2.9 megabytes. 2.9 megabytes. Oh, that's not so big. 2.9 megabytes. Not so big, right? But really, what that was was like that crazy amount of zeros and ones. So how do we decrease the file size? Is there some way that we could actually create some sort of algorithm, some sort of formula to remember the information, right? What what colors go where, but to do it with with less zeros and ones. And so those are those are codecs, compression decompression algorithms. So that's kind of like how we get the different file formats. Okay, so here's an example. All right, so those two flags, let's just look at this one. So one way I could store the image, the information for all of this stuff is to store each picture, each pixel's color. Right, this pixel's yellow, and then the next one's yellow, and then hey, guess what? Next one once again is yellow. Oh, and this one's yellow. Oh, and guess what? This one's also yellow, same yellow, right? So I could store all of those individual pixels, each one's this color, this color, this color. Or I could come up with some formula. I could say, hey, from this coordinate to this coordinate, all the same color. From this coordinate to this coordinate, all the same color. From that coordinate to that coordinate, all the same color. So I could create this algorithm, this compression algorithm. So instead of having to store all whatever million zeros and ones would be there, I could say, you know, here's this little formula that says this is, this is how to reconstruct the image. And if other computers know how to read it, then when they, they open up that file, they'll see, oh, you know, here's how this image was compressed. And they could, re they could recreate it, right? Because they'll know how to read it. Does that make sense? You guys are just like bored to tears. Wow, this is really technical. No, is that what you're feeling? Interesting. Okay. So that's what a compression, decompression, or a codec does. A compression, decompression algorithm or a codec reduces file size. And there's lossy and lossless. Lossy and lossless. Right? So there's lossy and lossless compression. and lossless. Okay, so lossless means that I can compress it and then I can uncompress it and I haven't lost any data. I haven't lost any quality. It's lossless. Lossy means I compress it and some data got thrown away. It's never coming back. So when it gets uncompressed, it's going to be slightly different. And that's for all kinds of compression. So MP3, MP3 is lossy. Like you take a song that's on a CD and convert it to MP3, you just went from CD quality down to MP3 quality. You've thrown away 90% of the data. You're never getting that data back. It's lossy compression. But you have a much smaller file size, much smaller file size. So here is a, you know, like the difference there in the JPEG, right? So I've thrown away data there, and I'm never getting it back. I saved that file as a JPEG, like I've saved it and thrown away data to get a smaller file size, and I'll never get it back. If I go from this and I save it to a smaller file size, that. So it's a uh, loss, lossy, lossy. Okay. And then some of them have different characteristics, like GIFs, you can animate GIFs. You can animate GIFs. So that's one of the characteristics of GIF. PNGs and GIFs, but not JPEGs, you can make them transparent, right? So it can see through 
part of the image. So the different files have different characteristics. So those are bitmap images. Then there are vector images. Vector images, they don't map the individual bits, the individual pixels. They don't map bits to the individual pixels with vectors. Vectors are like formulas. Right? So it says, oh, here's a formula, and, you know, redraw this. And so as you scale in, as you zoom in on a vector, you never lose quality. It never pixelates. The formula just recalculates, recalculates, recalculates. That's another way to do it. So the same thing with audio. We have to somehow store audio data. We have to store, somehow store audio data as zeros and ones. So if you listen to music, weird, I'm not logged in as me. Let me see. It's not there. Don't say. Wow, there goes all that. There goes all that. I'm going to restart. No, I'm going to log out, log off. Log on. Make your computer camp. It's not letting me log on, man. Doesn't like that, the Mac keyboard. Ah, there we go. That's doing its deal. So, how does what is sound? Sound is there's a sound wave, right? There's sound wave. That's what sound is. Did you know there are no colors in the world? Did you guys know that? You heard like the world is all illusion, right? People say, oh, the world's illusion. You never heard that. It's a spiritual teaching. The world is Maya. The world is illusion. There are no colors in the world. Nor is there any sound in nature. All that, all the colors you see, they are, it's just energy. They're just waves, energetic waves. And they go into your eyes, and then your eyes interpret different wavelengths and different colors. Your brain creates the colors. But sound, there's no sound in nature. It's completely quiet, right? There are waves of energy traveling through the air, and they go in and they, you know, maybe some of you are taking biology, they, they, you're, there's these little hairs in your ears. They get vibrated by these, these waves of energy moving through the air. They get vibrated, and your brain says that sound. There's no sound out here. It's just waves of energy. Your brain says that is sound. Your brain says those are colors. Isn't that interesting? All right. So here, here are the sound waves, right? Sound wave traveling through the air. And we need to store this as zeros and ones. So let's say, hey, every second, there's one second, we'll just take samples of what that sound is like, you know? Okay, it sounds like that, that point, that, that point. And we'll take samples a whole bunch of times for that sound wave. And uh, if we want it to be stereo, we'll do it from two locations, left and right. Okay, so these samples, right, like if we do 44,100 samples a second, then that's 44.1 kilohertz. That's 44,100 samples a second. 44,100 samples a second. We're sampling that sound 44,100 times. And it's storing zeros and ones for it. Right? And so then we also have to determine for each of those samples how many zeros and ones do we store so we can store the sound. If we only store one bit, 
then the sound could be uh, e, uh, e, it could be really crappy. But if we store more zeros and ones for each sample, then uh, you know we have more sounds that we say, hey, it's this sound, it's this sound, it's this sound. So that, that's basically how you do it with sound. Bring this back up. So uh, with audio, it's sample rate. How many samples every second? CD quality is 44,100. The resolution is the bits we store for each sample. And then the number of channels would be like, one would be uh, mono and two would be stereo. Right? Or five, one, five channels, right? Storing sound from five different places. Um, so that's, that's what we're, we're doing with, with, uh, with audio. And then, as an example, here is something uh, with, you know, maybe not so many samples every second and a really low resolution. The number of zeros and ones are the amount of bits that are stored for each sample we take. Here is a 44,100. 44,100 uh, samples a second. Uh, I don't know what the resolution is on CD quality, how many bits, but this is CD quality right here. Just checking to make sure that's right, hold on. CD quality. Yeah, that's CD quality. So that file size is 46 megabytes, okay? Here's the MP3, and this file size is four megabytes. One-tenth the file size. We've thrown away 90% of the data, okay? We've gone through and we said, okay, what data can we throw away that the human ear can't hear? Let's throw it away. You think if we threw away 90% of the data, the, the quality would be really a lot worse? Seems like it would be, right? But listen to MP3. Tell me if you could tell the difference. And I'm going to play either the MP3 or the CD quality. And you try to tell me if it's MP3 or CD quality. Well, the last right. one was MP3? Yeah, the last one was MP3. So I'm going to play either CD or MP3, and you tell me which it is. All right, what do you think? CD? Yeah, CD. It's kind of hard to tell. So it's all about storing the zeros and ones. That's what it all comes down to. And it's the same thing with video. Right? When we store video, uh, it's just like storing the data for a, a picture. But when we compress it, we can only look for patterns of data on the x, y axes, but also on the z axes going through time. Right? So if we had many pictures lined up one after another, we could look through them and see if there's any, any way we could store that data without storing every single picture elements here on one. All right, so that's the same for video. Streaming, uh, I don't know if you guys know what streaming is. Streaming is when you start watching a video, download some of it, and then it starts playing while it continues to download ahead of you. That's streaming. So, 
We'll talk about website creation some other time. Fair amount of information. Anybody have any questions? All right. So the most important thing to me that stands out from this class is, I, I've said this before, but you guys should really know these terms, like for your own benefit. So when you're out in the world, you understand how computers work. So I know that my class is kind of relaxed, but, you know, um, I don't know what else to say after that. <laughs> You know, it's uh, it's for your own benefit, for your own good, to sort of know how all of this is happening. All right. You guys have the rest of class, uh, about a half hour, to work on whatever you'd like. Hit the front lights, and I will play. Uh, I will play this uh, Johnny Cash video for you. <laughs>